Hi there, and welcome to this video on GCSE Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of reproduction, and in particular on inherited disorders. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything, and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to this tutorial on inherited disorders. So in today's tutorial we are going to be having a look at a few genetic disorders that you need to know the specification and then also come on to the concept of screening where we can actually test for these genetic disorders before the baby is delivered. So this is your specification point for today so it's quite a short one so this isn't this won't be a too complicated tutorial. So some disorders can be inherited genetically. Now all that means is that it's encoded within the genome of the person, whereas other disorders might be inherited during the life of the, of the patient. So for example, if a patient has a car accident and has severe brain damage, then that's a disorder that they've inherited throughout their life. Well, not inherited, but you know they've obtained this disorder within their lifespan. But on the contrary, some disorders can be inherited from birth, so it's in their genetics. So these disorders, or these particular mutated genes, can be transmitted from the parents to the offspring via the inheritance of different alleles. Now remember, I said in the last tutorial that alleles are just different versions of the same gene. So we looked at an eye colour example and we found that brown eye colour and blue eye colour colour are just different alleles of the eye colour gene because there are different variants of the gene. So there are two main examples of genetic disorders that you are required to know for the syllabus. So they're polydactyly and cystic fibrosis. So those are your two biggies. So polydactyly I think is always quite a fun word just generally to say and also to figure out how to spell and cystic fibrosis you've probably already heard a little bit about but we'll go through them now. So polydactyly is the presence of extra fingers or toes. Now this is caused by a dominant allele. Now remember in the last tutorial when we were looking at genetic inheritance, we found that if you inherit a dominant allele, it always presents in the phenotype. But if you inherit a recessive allele, there has to be an absence of the dominant allele in order for the recessive allele to present in the phenotype. And remember the word phenotype just means the presentation of a particular genotype in the person. So polydactyly is caused by a dominant allele, therefore if any of the offspring inherit the allele for polydactyly, polydactyly they will have the genetic disorder, unless there is any mutation of course. And the mutation is just a change in the sequence of your bases in your DNA. So cystic fibrosis, on the other hand, is encoded for by a recessive allele, and this is um, a form of a mutation in the genetic code for which certain chloride channels then dysfunction, therefore leading to slightly thicker mucus than normal in, their, in the lining of their lungs and in their airways. Um, also, it affects the pancreas as well. So this leads to a secretion of extra thick mucus, which can cause huge breathing difficulties to patients, because you can imagine that if you have a thick layer of mucus in your airways, that's going to restrict the amount of air that can passage in through into your lungs. So for example, when you're ill, you might have extra thick mucus in your throat, but that gets cleared away by your immune system. But in this case, this isn't a pathological presentation, it's just continuously extra thick mucus in the patients who suffer with this disease. So as I said, it's caused by a recessive allele, which means that two alleles for cystic fibrosis must be inherited from mum and dad. And therefore it can be passed on by unaffected heterozygous parents. So the way I like to think of it, if I use maybe big H, small h here. So 
we're saying if they have cystic fibrosis, they've got to have these two alleles present. But if parents are heterozygous, so they have one dominant allele for cystic fibrosis, one recessive allele, then that means they are carriers for cystic fibrosis, but they don't actually have the genetic disorder. Okay, so this is a way in which unaffected parents can pass on a genetic disease to their child because they are carriers of the cystic fibrosis recessive alleles. And they therefore then pass this recessive allele onto their offspring. Because remember, if we look at the genetic cross, maybe that might make it a little bit easier for you. But if we have mom with her HH, we have dad with his HH, then we're going to get the following combinations in the offspring. And this little baby over here will have inherited the two cystic fibrosis alleles required for this child to then go on and develop cystic fibrosis. But you can see that mum and dad do not actually have the disease themselves. Okay, so that's all that means. So they have heterozygous parents, they're carriers of, the of cystic fibrosis, and they go on to have a child with cystic fibrosis. <clears throat> but obviously it can be passed on as well if parents are um, homozygous for the recessive allele too. Now we can screen for inherited disorders. So this is what we call embryonic screening because we're screening the embryo, the developing baby, and this can take place in order to test for certain risk alleles for genetic disorders. So this process can take place in many ways, so you just have to learn a couple of examples. So amniocentesis is when a sample of amniotic fluid from the area surrounding the fetus can be tested. So you see this kind of white gap here between the fetus and the placenta. Well, that is where the amniotic fluid is, and it contains fetal cells. So we can actually insert a little needle in here and sample this fluid. And that fluid can tell us a little bit about the genetics, well, a lot about the genetics of the fetus. So that's referred to as amniocentesis. And the second one you have to know is chorionic villus sampling, which is when a sample from the placenta, so this is your placenta here, which is the nutrient source for the baby, and it's when a sample from the placenta is taken and checked, okay? And we call it chorionic villus sampling because the placenta contains these um, little structures called villi. So that's the only reason why. So these are quite complicated words, but do commit them to memory and do definitely also remember exactly where it's coming from. So amniocentesis is sampling the amniotic fluid, whereas chorionic villus sampling is sampling the placenta directly. So then that DNA is taken from the embryo and it's tested. Now that's as I just said, so make sure you understand where the sample is taken from and you might be asked to identify the type of screening based on where the sample is taken. So make sure you know these two statements here inside out. Okie dokie. So ethics in non-IVF pregnancy. So if you have parents who have just been informed that their child may be at risk of developing cystic fibrosis because their child has the recessive alleles, then they're obviously going to have a bit of an ethical problem here because they've then got to decide what they want to do because they will be in knowledge that their child may go on to develop cystic fibrosis or polydactyly. So this can lead to an element of choice in some cases, but only in, bad, in cases where you know the disability might be severe or the child's life might be at risk. So in these cases, parents may get the option of terminating the pregnancy. But obviously it has to be a very severe inherited disorder. So something like polydactyly can be easily um, resolved you know, using surgery once the baby is born. But it's not a disease that is going to put the baby's life at risk. And therefore the option of terminating the pregnancy may not be very valid there. So there are ethics involved in this because some believe that 
this testing is unethical and it could ruin the opportunity for an embryo to live a life. Um, but also, others may not actually use this information to terminate the pregnancy, but instead be better prepared for when the baby comes and be better prepared to support their child who may have some sort of genetic disorder. So in IVF, if an embryo is found to have a genetic disorder, it is not implanted. So this is very controversial in itself because that would mean that that embryo is then gone on to be destroyed. Now, one thing to remember is that all of this testing is very expensive, but then you've also got to balance that up against the healthcare for the child who was born with a genetic disorder, because that may be even greater to support this child and allow them to live a good life. Also, if the results are a false positive or a false negative, that could lead to great trauma to a family, because Obviously, there are some issues in terms of the specificity and the accuracy of these screening results. So that's everything covered today. So not only have we looked at some examples of genetic disorders, but also we've had a look at screening and we've discussed some of the issues surrounding screening. So make sure you do learn those, those kind of like extra bits where we're talking about the ethics and the economics and the social impacts of screening, because that could very well come up. But well done for today and I'll see you for the next session. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.